The Raylite Brass Pineapple above is one of my favorite EDC flashlights. Today I have the Raylite TI LAN on my review table. Thanks to Ray at Raylite for sending me this light at a discount so that I could review it. The TI LAN shares many of its design features and characteristics with the Pineapple, so if you like the Pineapple, you'll love the TI LAN and it'll help you save a few ounces. The TI LAN is made up from TI 6AL for the titanium. It's been bead blasted in its finish, but this light is also available as a polished titanium. I like the, the bead blasted because I think it helps show fewer scratches. This can be debated, and mine definitely is showing some wear after carrying it for several weeks, but I still like the bead blasted best. The machining on this light is really good. As you can see in my hand, there's really no sharp edges. Everything's been knocked down. It's just really nice feeling in the hand. I like the detail cuts, these reliefs here, and this extra ring. It's just an appealing design to me. On the end here, you've got spot for tritium. So it's got six spots on the end cap here and then one in the center, like the pineapple has the one in the center. But then on the front here, you've got three capacities as well. So there are a total of 10 cutouts on this light, and they take the uh, six millimeter by one millimeter tritium vials. If you don't know what tritium is, it's a radioactive form of hydrogen gas, and it's very low levels of radioactivity, so it's safe to handle, most people consider. However, uh, it lets off a little bit of light. And I did a video explaining tritium and installing it in my pineapple that I'll link to below. The logo on this light is very lightly uh, etched here, sandblasted. And I like that. It's just discreet. It doesn't detract from the style of the light at all. The threads on this light are nicely cut. They're triangular. And there's plenty of them. They're nice and fine. And there is an O-ring on either side. This light is designed for flat tops and button cells. Um, flat tops will fit a little bit better. As you can see, there's a raised indentation in there. But I have had good luck running uh, some Keep Power button tops as well. So your luck may vary. But the head itself is nicely compartmentalized. At the back end, there is a spring. So this light comes into several pieces. This uh, part also comes out, but uh, I'd recommend leaving it in there. And I think I'll even add a bit of a Loctite to mine so it doesn't come loose. But there's a switch. You've got the uh, button then on top that it sits right there. You can put the uh, clip on the tritium holder and clip holder. I do recommend unscrewing the head of this light, not the tail. I like the older brass pineapple design uh, because of the way that switch is installed. On this light, the uh, switch is fairly well balanced. It doesn't rock side to side. It just goes up and down nicely, and it is a mechanical switch with an audible click. The brass versus titanium, the main difference you get is weight savings. So both these lights do not have batteries in them currently. And 3.2 ounces for the newer generation of brass pineapple without tritium. And the titanium version is 2.31 ounces. So by going with titanium over brass, you save about an ounce and you get a spice for a lot of, lot of tritium. Length comes in here at 96.16 millimeters. And diameter on its thickest part is 21 millimeters. And here's just an overall size comparison. I've got the Olite S1A. This is in stainless steel, but they do make a titanium version. And it runs a 14500 battery or AA. Same as the Raylite Brass Pineapple. And as you can see, the pineapple is just a little bit longer. Then the interesting one here, I've got the MSR D4. And this actually runs an 18650 and has four LEDs. And it is just a hair shorter than the Raylite. So this is definitely a very compact design. And you give up some of that in the optics versus the Raylite actually has a pretty nice set of optics. As I mentioned before, this is a tail click operation light and it does tail stand without issues. I've had zero problems with this light turning on in my pocket and that's one of the reasons why I really like it. And even if it did come on in your pocket, it comes on in moonlight mode, so it's never going to get hot or start a fire in that mode. The LED in use in this light is a Nisha 219C in neutral white. And this isn't the highest output LED, 
but the light quality more than makes up for it in my opinion. It's a high CRI LED as well. So the light color is similar to my BLF348, which I did a review on, and it's a high CRI. What this means is that colors appear to be very natural and normal. Personally, I'll trade high CRI and neutral white for highest output cool white any day. So as I mentioned before, this light starts out on moonlight at 0 0.02 lumens, and that's really low. You've got to be in near pitch black conditions for it to be useful. That said, the three remaining modes are pretty useful, especially when running on the 14500 battery. On screen now is a larger picture of the back of the package here where it shows the light table. And as you can see, there's a big performance difference between the AA battery size and a 14500 lithium battery. The max of 110 lumens with the AA isn't class leading. However, on a 14500, it's a lot better at 390 lumens. I find this more than needed on normal EDC tasks. I use lithium batteries when I EDC this light to get that extra boost in performance. But if you needed to, running on the AA would be fine. On high, this light gets really hot when it runs for five minutes. It does not step down due to temperature. On my standard one minute temperature test, you can see what temperature it got to here. And that's warm, um, but definitely not too hot to hold. I have parts on the way to log temperature and outputs to create better graphs. So you should see that soon here in about a month. This light does not have any buzzing when I hold it up to my ear on, lowest, on the low modes. So here's my tabletop shots. And as you can see, the light is on low and moonlight, and you can see it's just real, real dim. Bumping up, you can see this is the next lowest mode, and with the 14500, it's six and a half lumens. Bumping up again is 81 lumens on medium, and this is a good mode to show you the beam profile of this light. You've got a hot center, so it throws, you know, decently well for its size. This isn't a thrower, but it's better than just an all flood. Lastly is high. 390 lumens. I just find this to be a nice amount for general use. Here's my night shots for the Raylite TI LAN. This uses the Nisha 219 driver, and first mode is incredibly low, moonlight mode. If I bump up, here is low mode, and I've tried to adjust the camera so that it really accurately shows what this light is like to the human eye. So I've got a picnic table about 10 feet in front of me, and it easily lights up that on this next lowest mode. There's a tree off to my left, and I can just barely make it out. If I bump up a mode, the picnic table becomes even more visible, and you can start to see the trees in the background there if I pan up. Um, to the eye, the trees are a little more visible. And then if I bump up to the last mode here, you can really start to see the trees there in the last mode. This is a simple flashlight, but it really does the job nicely. I wanted to compare the neutral white and slightly warm characteristics of the Nisha 219 in this Raylite TI LAN and the Brass Pineapple for that instance, same driver, to my Olite S1A in cool white. So there's the neutral white and there's the cool white. The cool white really washes out the colors and uh, it makes things harder to distinguish, but the neutral white is more natural colors to the eye and makes things uh, appear more natural. I had no major issues with the pocket clip on this light. It fits well in my pants pocket and stays in place. It is a captured clip and it's non-reversible. If you want to remove it, you can unscrew this back end here and it'll come right off. However, it will leave a little bit of gap on the light. So I've, I've chose to leave it on. What I don't like is this little nub here that's opposite the light. The good news is you can file this down if you don't like it. The light does not come with a lanyard, and I just don't think that's a big enough hole to really be very useful as a lanyard. So I will file that off. I did happen to end up bending this clip once. It was my fault, not the fault of the flashlight. And I was able to unscrew the bottom and then using a table bend and press the clip back into a, a normal position, install it back on the light, zero problems. So here is the new box that the TI LAN comes in. It's a nice box. Uh, you've got some specs here on the side. Uh, it gives a battery recommendation. It is an anti-reflective coated glass, reverse polarity protection, 10 tritium slots, 10 by 6 millimeters, all the good stuff. 
Then on the back, you've got the table and a little bit of directions. Tells you what batteries are run. And then uh, some directions to visit the Raylight Facebook group. This is what it looks like when you get it. You get the flashlight itself. You get a pair of extra O-rings. Simple black foam. Very simple, but a nice box. This is a really nice EDC light, in my opinion. It's not tactical, but instead it's very practical. And it's definitely attractive looking, no matter whether you get it in brass or titanium like this one. It sits well in my pocket, and it's comfortable to EDC. And I think a lot of that is because of its diameter isn't too wide. I'm a big titanium fanboy, and I really like how the bead blasted finish looks on this. And remember, there's a polished version for it as well. I like that you can power this light on a normal alkaline AA or a nickel metal hydride if you need to. And under those, the performance is a little bit behind the curve. However, with the 14500, the performance, I think, is pretty good and about perfect for EDC. Combine this with a neutral white high CRI LED option and a tail switch that you can kind of uh, half click on to bump up in modes without click, click, click. And I think this becomes a great EDC in my opinion. The TI LAN is now available on Amazon with prime shipping. This makes it fast and easy to get a great, elegant EDC custom light at a very affordable price. I'll put a link in the description below, and at the time of recording, there's a coupon to help you save a little bit of money. I definitely recommend you check this light out. It's a great way to get into the flashlight hobby and something you will keep around and use for years. A like, share, and subscribe on this video helps me to continue to bring you new content like this one. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below.